Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Agile TD Mondays, today with Elizabeth Sagrova. But before Elizabeth gets her chance to speak, I would like you to encourage to register for the Agile Testing Days 2017 in Potsdam. As you see, we have neither spared expenses or, nor effort to bring you the most knowledgeable people in the Agile and testing world. So don't forget to register now, the sooner the better. And now to you, Elizabeth. Thanks, Sabine. And uh, I'm actually speaking at Agile Testing Day, so if someone wants to meet me in person or hear more about what I'm going to talk about today, or uh, being an introvert is actually the topic of my talk there, um, that's a good chance to meet me in person. But anyway, today, uh, the topic is introducing pair testing to a team. Uh, so uh, I started on a new team in November uh, at a new company. I'm at uh, Metadata. Uh, we do software for clinical trials. Uh, so I was uh, joining a team that already existed with a few testers on it. So when we were trying to figure out how to pair test all together, what we ended up uh, doing was uh, falling into sort of more specific uh, defined roles. So we ended up with uh, a driver, the person sort of navigating um, the mouse and the keyboard and actually using the machine that we were testing on. Uh, we ended up with a backseat driver, so the person telling the driver where to go and, and what to think about when they were selecting uh, what to do next. And a note taker was the third person, so someone uh, who at the beginning of the session wrote out the charter, what we planned to do during the session. Uh, during the session, they would take detailed notes uh, about what we were doing every step of the way so that we could uh, recreate what we did during a session or go and reference those notes later. Um, and then they'd also uh, be the uh, person who wrote out the summary at the end. So uh, pulling together the highlights from our log and uh, tying it back into the charter from the beginning. Uh, the last person that we have here, the light bulb, um, was our Oracle. Uh, so we had one tester on the team that had been here the longest and knew the product the best. And uh, he was there to answer questions and give us some hints about how to work around issues as we came, as they came up. Uh, as a baseline, uh, we had all been software testers for a few years. Um, the other team members had been at the company for a few, few years as well. Uh, and we had all taken the rap rapid software testing course from Paul Holland here. Uh, so we all uh, were both inspired to uh, exploratory test with exploration in mind and uh, think about what else could go wrong when we were looking at the product. Uh, the product that we were testing was, uh, is, I guess we're still testing it, uh, it's called Coder and uh, it connects the uh, medical code, so something that maybe the in the U.S. the uh, National Food and Drug Administration would come up with to an adverse event. So that might be um, a side effect or a different medication that you're taking during a clinical trial. Uh, so being in the medical space, we're high, highly regulated. We get audited both by the Food and Drug Administration and our clinical research organizations that purchase our proprietary software. Um, so those are most often pharmaceutical companies. Uh, so it's important for us to have evidence of our testing and we go through, um, after the regular course of our work, a validation process of uh, looking at the software again in a different environment before it gets released to production. Uh, so with all of those uh, constraints in mind, we end up releasing probably less often than, than some other companies. We end up doing a few releases a year. Um, and it's important for us to be able to show that a particular feature was added or a particular bug was fixed on the build number that goes out every time we release. Uh, so having to answer to auditors and uh, being held very accountable for our work can be a little terrifying, but let me tell you uh, how pair testing has helped us do that. So uh, one of the benefits that I found uh, in pair testing with my team is that it's a great place to learn about the product. It's a safe place for me to ask questions of my other team members. Um, we have an hour set aside every day in our schedule to pair test, so it means that uh, someone is looking at the product every day. There's not going to be something 
new or catastrophic that goes unnoticed for a long time in the product. Uh, sometimes we spend that hour uh, diagnosing issues pr from production, so we get uh, information from our customer service team, uh, and it needs a little more fleshing out before it goes to, develop to a developer for a fix or a diagnosis, and we're able to help with that. Uh, and in this process, we are catching more issues before we get to validation. Uh, as we're pair testing, we're exploring things that aren't just the product. So we are considering uh, the help content that our customers write, might read. Uh, we're creating workflow diagrams and mind maps to consider how our product integrates with the other products at metadata and integrates um, with the other systems. So uh, that allows us a chance to consider what else could go wrong. Uh, we consider not just what the help content or the customers are told is supported by our product, not, not just what it's sort of supposed to do, but what is possible. We're able to explore all of those possibilities in these sessions. Um, another benefit is that we have time aside for meetings to test. So uh, our schedules can get really packed sometimes, but knowing that we have an hour every day means that when we get to the end of the sprint and maybe there are some tickets piled up for testing, uh, we're able to get through those all together. Uh, pair testing has helped with our team cohesion, especially as a new person to the team, uh, being able to work all together gave me an opportunity to know the other members on my team better and to figure out which parts of the product they had specialized in and who was the right person to ask when I had a question about a particular thing. Uh, another benefit is that we've practiced changing after, after retrospectives. So we've had a couple of retrospectives just on our pair testing process. So um, we've identified some testability issues in the product and some scheduling issues uh, for the team, and we've been able to uh, think about what is blocking us from moving forward in some of those cases and making changes as a result, and then we're going to come back around again and continue to improve. Uh, I also want to tell you about some non-struggles that we had, so things that I thought would be struggles going in when uh, this became something that we wanted to focus on as a team, pair testing, but uh, these turned out not to really be struggles, so uh, buy-in from the team was the big one. I thought that developers or a project manager would see pair testing as a waste of time, something taking us away from our uh, daily work, but yeah, everyone was pretty on board. Um, I was also worried that as we started to invite developers to our sessions that uh, they would uh, maybe not be willing to attend or engage with us, uh, but it's really been a great addition. Um, we've brought developers in when we're testing a particular feature that that person has built, and so we bring them in as an expert, and developers love to show up and have all the answers and be able to uh, nitpick what we're doing. It's good to reverse the roles that way between the developers and the testers and the team. Uh, and it's helped us uh, outside of our pair testing sessions, so when we do bring them over for a question, they're more eager to talk to us and to help. Uh, I was also concerned about project manager control, uh, just whether uh, our project manager would want to step in and tell us what, what to test every day or try to move or cancel our sessions. That hasn't been an issue. And lastly, uh, I was worried that we wouldn't have enough things to test. That was uh, somewhat a struggle in the beginning, but we've gotten better at debriefing at the end of sessions and identifying what we want to do in the following sessions. Uh, I thought that we would initially get through sort of each feature and then run out of things, but that definitely hasn't been the case. So now let me tell you about some of the struggles that we've had. Uh, scheduling has been a big one. Um, sometimes you have meetings that conflict, uh, and it can be difficult to get everyone on the same call at the same time. At the beginning, I was only able to ten, attend three of the five sessions per week because I had so many other team commitments. 
Uh, what else? Oh yeah, we had some hardware difficulties. So as you saw from the beginning of this call, uh, Google Hangouts can be uh, maybe not the most reliable, particularly when combined with a taxed office Wi-Fi system. Um, so the sort of direction of the microphone or the quality of the headphones means that it can be difficult to hear your fellow team members. We're not co-located, so we do have to use some kind of uh, online tool to talk to each other and see each other's screens. The other problem that I have is we're in an open office plan and it can be hard to uh, either hear the other team members over the person next to me or uh, people who sit near me speak so loudly that then their voice gets picked up even more so than mine by my own microphone. Another struggle we had was testability problems with the product. So we'd go to the environment that we wanted to go be in uh, in testing for that day and the site would be down or a lot of things would require data set up ahead of time, time consuming data setup. So if we showed up to a session and wanted to set something up, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have time both to set up the data and test the thing. Or we get halfway through a session and realized we needed this complicated data setup. Uh, so it was difficult, particularly in the beginning, to find the right topics that would take, that would fill up the hour that we had set aside for pair testing, but not take so long that it would run into our other commitments. Oh yeah, as I said earlier, choosing a topic uh, was a bit of a struggle at the start. We've gotten into a good routine of brainstorming at the end of sessions. That's when uh, we see the most opportunities. Uh, there are also a lot of people. So uh, when we're not co-located, uh, it means that, right, as I said, we were on the call. Uh, when you have enough people on a call, it can be hard to accommodate everyone's input, uh, especially with the open office plan if you are muting or unmuting while uh, driving around the product. It can be hard to switch back and forth fast enough to interject or change where the person is going. Uh, we found that the driver, the person uh, using the mouse and the keyboard to go where we were testing, uh, sometimes only explained enough for the most knowledgeable team members. So. Uh, a new, as a new member to the team, I had to interrupt and uh, ask m for more things to be explained. Uh, we had, we're still practicing getting our inner monologue to be our outer monologue. Uh, the other thing with having so many people on the team is the social dynamics that already exist get put under a microscope. So if there's uh, something else going on or some other tension, then having to work together for an hour can really exacerbate those problems. Um, and then as you know from being on calls, uh, the lack of visual cues can make it hard to interpret silence. It's unclear whether someone's stepped away from their machine for a minute or just having trouble finding the unmute button to interject when you ask them a question. Um, oh, another struggle was that we were too reliant on our Oracle. So having someone that we knew we could consult to find out uh, what sort of the right answer was or what uh, this product has done in the past, what the expected behavior might be, meant that we uh, sometimes weren't exploring or discovering as much for ourselves. Uh, and lastly, our note taking uh, proved to be somewhat of a struggle uh, when you have to uh, interrupt the person driving the keyboard and the mouse uh, to write down everything in the log. Uh, that can slow things down. Um, and then once we had all of these collections of charters and logs, um, we've, they've collected in our team Google Drive without uh, a lot of follow-up. So we have things that maybe would be UX improvements or things that didn't exactly fall into the bug category that we would have written together during the pair session filed in JIRA that uh, we're still trying to figure out how to pay the appropriate follow-up attention to them. So these are the next steps that we want to think about how to improve and, and where we're going from here. Uh, we've split up uh, into two groups. We've added some members to the team, so that's uh, allowed us to 
have enough uh, knowledge to share among two groups. So that's allowed us to compare notes. At the end of the sessions, we see we sort of start with a similar charter or feature that we're going to explore, and then we often end up in completely different places during the course of the session. Uh, we're also working on a better schedule for uh, who's on what team and what topic we're going to test that day so that everyone can show up right on time and get started. Uh, we moved the meeting farther away from lunchtime. That made it easier for everyone to be on the call right away. Um, and it ended up with fewer conflicts with other meetings. So more people can attend and it's easier to get started. Uh, we're also going to have more retros in the future. Uh, it's important for us to consider what's working and change what isn't so that we can decide as a group what's important to address. Uh, and the last thing that we're going to work on is doing more debriefs. So at the end of a session, figuring out uh, what we're going to do for future sessions and if we come across things that aren't specifically bugs, how we're going to address those. Uh, I think that's all I wanted to say about pair testing, so I'm, and I thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Do you have any remarks, final remarks? Uh, I think that's all I got. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. And now let me tell you who's going to be my guest next week. Next week, Mark Winteringham is going to tell you something about uh, tatas and tattoos. And tune in to find out more. I wanted to say goodbye to Elizabeth, but she stopped. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Turned off her camera. <laughs> That's also a way to say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for taking your time. Sorry for the disruption at the beginning. No it problem. Was, Thanks so much. It was very funny with you. It was, <laughs> and it was sweet and short. <laughs> Thank so, you very much. Okay. So long. <laughs>